while mixing business with politics, taking a close look at corporations wading into the social arena. Take a look at the AT&T CEO saying, quote, we're ill-equipped for politics and we're spending a lot of time on it. Well, here now, Jerry Boyer, Boyer Research President. Jerry, glad to have you with us on this topic. You've been doing something very interesting this past year. You've been weighing into shareholder meetings and you've been asking the tough questions of these companies. How are you involved in politics and why? Talk about what you're finding. What I'm finding is that I feel like they have a little bit of maybe buyer's remorse when it comes to getting into some of these political issues. Uh, I think that certain you know ideological activist groups show up and say, here, here's legislation. It has equality in it. It must be good. And they sign up for it, and they don't read the legislation. And then someone like me comes to the annual meeting representing institutional shareholder, and I say, do you understand that the Equality Act weakens religious liberty? And it's just crickets. They didn't read the legislation. They don't know. And so they're kind of stuck, always kowtowing to people from the left, and they're beginning to figure out that that has left them really exposed to a backlash. Jerry, why not just not play? Politics is not our thing. We're not good at it. We don't have any competency in it. We don't want to be in it. We're just not going to play. Why don't more CEOs take that approach right now? Yeah, I mean, that's the point. And it was interesting what the CEO of AT&T said. There was a lot of, you know, we're not really very good at this and um, we can't, you know, we're ill-equipped to deal with this. And politics is really tough and it's really toxic. And, uh, you know, I'm spending a lot of time on it and not go on to the obvious conclu conclusion. Stop doing it then. I mean, businesses understand the idea of core competency, your telecommunications company, and yet they think they can weigh in on social engineering or take one side in a culture war and do it competently. I think the reason they do it is because there's been an enormous amount of pressure from an hyper, a one hyper-organized group, and they haven't heard from anybody else. People like me who invest as shareholders, I'm not there as an activist, right. I'm an investor. Uh, so we kind of let that go, and people who are there more as activists than as investors have essentially had the debate to themselves. We didn't lose this game on points. We forfeited by not showing up. Yeah, I, this is, I don't think this is a game you can win. I really don't. But Jerry, I want to get your take on this as well. Exxon is losing at least two board seats to an activist investor in a battle over climate change. The Wall Street Journal dubbing it, quote, the proxy coup at Exxon. The editorial going on to explain, quote, the San Francisco-based hedge fund engine number one formed in November of last year set out to overhaul Exxon's board. Its goal? make the biggest U.S. oil and gas company transition out of its legacy business. Jerry, you look at what's happening here, the big activist investor. As a CEO, this is a thing that must keep them up at night and make them not want to get out of bed in the morning. How do you react to this news for Exxon? Well, I react a couple of things. One, they shouldn't have made their, they put, should have been playing footsie with the left to begin with. You cannot appease them. So by already buying into their agenda, by already calling for carbon taxes, they resisted, they weakened their ability to resist. That's one thing. The other thing is, this isn't some little plucky hedge fund, you know, a little engine that could. This was backed by the big boys, the Black Rocks, the Vanguards. Mm. This was a $30 million proxy campaign, one of the most expensive in history. So this is there's big money behind this. It's not about social justice. That Social justice is a front for special interests. I think that Exxon should get out of the politics except to defend fossil fuels. If they're in the fossil fuel business. There's no other, op no other business they can be in. Start defending it because it's worth defending. You know, you got to wonder at some point if people are going to want to lead companies like this when they know you sit in that seat, you've got a target on your back, and it is the big money. It's not the little guys coming after you. It's the big money. Jerry, we've got to leave it there. Thank you so much for your time today. We appreciate it. Thank you, Brian. Well, your weekend is about to get a lot more expensive. Edward Lawrence, what's coming up? Yeah, Brian, so I've got my apron here, and there's nothing in my wallet because of this, and I'll tell you more about it coming up.